Claire Ridgway, founder of the Amber Linfiles website, also the Tudor Society and the author of several history books, including this one, The Fall of Anne Boleyn. Now, I decided to do a series of videos answering Anne Boleyn Files, um, followers' questions about Anne Boleyn and her family and her relationship with Henry VIII, Anne Boleyn, really. Um, and I got quite a few questions about Anne Boleyn's sister, Mary. And also I've been asked um, by people on YouTube as well, are you going to do a video on Mary? Well, actually, I'm going to do a couple of videos on Mary. Um, today, I want to talk about sort of facts to do with Mary. And in my next video, I'll sort of talk about some of the myths and assumptions and theories that surround her. So, Mary. Mary Boleyn was the sister of Queen Anne Boleyn. And she's a woman that really, really fascinates people, that really grabs people's attention and their imagination. Mary has appeared as a central character in several novels, one of which has been turned into a movie. I'm sure you've all heard of The Other Boleyn Girl by Philippa Gregory. Um, and she's also been the, um, the character, the main character, the, the theme of several uh, non-fiction books, history books as well. I mean, that's not bad for someone who we actually know so little about. Um, a few years ago, I had the huge honour of meeting one of my heroes, um, Professor Eric Ives, whose book on Anne Boleyn, uh, The Life and Death of Anne Boleyn, I call my Anne Boleyn Bible. I mean, that's a man who spent, what, 20 years or more uh, researching her life and writing about her. And I had the honour of meeting him and uh, eating with him and chatting to him and actually grilling him, let's be honest. I grilled him. And who wouldn't if they're sitting next to Eric Ives? And we got to talking about the Boleyn family and particularly Mary Boleyn. And we talked about the fascination um, that people have with Mary and how I'm always receiving questions about her. And he said that he just couldn't understand this fascination with Mary. He commented that what we know about Mary Boleyn can actually be written on a postcard with room to spare. That's what he said. So, so very, very little is known about her. But in a way, I think that's why she is so fascinating. She's such a shadowy um, figure compared to her more famous siblings, uh, you know, Anne Boleyn, who became queen, uh, George Boleyn, who of course fell with Anne Boleyn in May 1536. Yet Mary was a king's mistress. Um, so that is fascinating that we know so little about her and yet she was this fairly important person. And she makes the perfect blank canvas, I think, for novelists. And I think she's become a myth, a legend, really, due to fiction, due to what novelists have done with her. And also the way that we've projected our own ideas onto her. In an article I wrote on her um, for the Amber Linfiles website, I started off my article by telling the fairy tale, the legend that is Mary Boleyn and her life. And I'll read it here. This is what I put. Mary's the classic English rose, taking after her mother's side of the family. Her innocence was wrecked by her father and sister. Not only was she used and abused by the French king Francis I and his cronies, she was pimped out to the English king and shown how to satisfy him by her sister Anne. She was but a pawn in her family's hands. After bearing the king two illegitimate children and losing her husband William Carey to sweating sickness, Mary finally found true love, only to be banished from court by her spiteful sister, who is now queen and married to Mary's former love, Henry VIII. 
So cruel and ambitious was Mary's sister that she even stole Mary's son from her. Mary chose true love over ambition and was thus saved from the awful events of May 1536. Her forgiving nature and angelic disposition, however, led to her visiting the king and pleading for Anne's life. Unfortunately, Anne was not pardoned and was executed, but Mary was able to steal little Elizabeth from court and take her away from all the corruption there. So that is the legend, the fairy tale of Mary Boleyn that we would believe if we just read the novels about her, if we just saw the movies and TV series about her. That's the Mary Boleyn that kind of comes through. So she's like the antithesis of Anne Boleyn, who's quite often portrayed in these novels as being spiteful, ambitious, willing to do anything to become queen. And so Mary is the antithesis. She's the kinder sister. She's the innocent sister. So is any of that true? Well, the majority of that fairy tale has absolutely no basis in history whatsoever. So in today's video, I actually want to go through some Mary Boleyn facts, the actual things that we know about this woman. So let's go through my list. Mary Boleyn was born around the turn of the 16th century, but we don't actually know when. It seems that she was born between 1499 and 1505, so we don't even know this woman's birth date. Her parents were Thomas Boleyn and Elizabeth Howard. Her maternal uncle was Thomas Howard, 3rd Duke of Norfolk, and her paternal great-grandfather was Thomas Butler, 7th Earl of Ormond. Mary had a sister, Anne, and brothers called Thomas, Henry and George, although only George survived childhood. Mary, now this is a wishy-washy thing, this isn't a fact really, Mary was probably born at Blickling Hall in, in um, Norfolk, but would have called Hever Castle in Kent her home, because that's where the Boleyn family moved in 1505. So depending on when she was born, it's de dependent where she was born. In 1514, Mary accompanied the sister of King Henry VIII, Mary Tudor, to France to serve her there. We do not know how long Mary was in France with Mary Tudor, but Mary Boleyn had returned to England by the 4th of February 1520. We know that because on that day, the 4th of February 1520, she married William Carey, a member of the King's Privy Chamber in the Chapel Royal of Greenwich Palace. And we have the bells ringing out here, our church bells ringing out for Mary Boleyn's wedding, <laughs> her marriage to William Carey. King Henry VIII attended the service. Mary Boleyn had a sexual relationship with King Henry VIII at some point between her return from France, whenever that was, and the beginning of his relationship with her sister Anne. Mary played the part of kindness in the Chateau Vert Shrovetide pageant of March 1522. Mary had two surviving children, Catherine, born around 1524, we don't know exactly when, but circa 1524, and Henry Carey, born in 1526. Mary was pregnant in 1534, in autumn 1534, but it is not known what happened to that baby, whether it was stillborn, whether it was a phantom pregnancy, we just don't know, the baby is not mentioned again. Mary's husband, her first husband, William Carey, received a large number of lucrative grants and offices from King Henry VIII, and he also kept his position in the Privy Chamber through Cardinal Wolsey's purge of the Privy Chamber in 1526, known as the Eltham Ordinances. 
William Carey died on the 22nd of June 1528 after contracting that horrible illness, sweating sickness, which swept through court and killed quite a lot of courtiers and important people that year. In July 1528, so just a few weeks after Carey's death, Mary's sister Anne, who was courting King Henry VIII at the time, in fact she was his fiancée, she was like his queen in waiting, he'd proposed to her and she'd said yes, was granted the wardship of Mary's little son Henry Carey. Henry VIII intervened with Mary's father Thomas Boleyn on Mary's behalf after William Carey's death. Um, Mary was in financial dire straits because her husband had died, she'd been left a widow, uh, she needed money and Henry VIII intervened with her father, prompting him to make a provision for her at the end of June 1528 and also in December 1528 King Henry VIII granted Mary an annuity of £100 which had once been paid to her husband, so she was helped there. We know that Mary Boleyn was at the Royal Court at New Year 1532 and 1534 as she is listed as giving the King New Year's gifts. In autumn 1532, she accompanied her sister Anne and King Henry VIII on their trip to Calais. They left in October 1532. Um, that was for their famous meeting with King Francis I to get his approval for their relationship. So she went with them. In 1533, we know that she was attending her sister and that she attended on her at her coronation on the 1st of June, 1533. With then there's a little blank period, but Mary comes back into the records in 1534. She'd secretly married a man called William Stafford and she turns up at the Royal Court in September, 1534, pregnant to see her sister, the Queen. She is then banished from court for marrying without her sister, the Queen's permission, and is punished by having her allowance cut off by her father, Thomas Boleyn. Mary, once again in financial dire straits, writes to Thomas Cromwell at this point, following her banishment, asking him to intervene and persuade the king to talk to his wife, who of course was Mary's sister, Anne, and also to intervene, for Cromwell to intervene on her behalf with the rest of her family so that they can be good to her. Then we fast forward to 1539, because there's then another blank. Mary's husband, William Stafford, is one of the men chosen to meet Anne of Cleves at Calais, Anne of Cleves was travelling to England uh, to marry King Henry VIII. So William Stafford is chosen to meet Anne at Calais and to escort her onwards. Mary's daughter, Catherine Carey, is appointed as one of Anne of Cleves' ladies-in-waiting, one of her maids of honour. Then in 1543, Mary receives the inheritance from her father and grandmother, Thomas Boleyn and Margaret Butler, who'd both died in 1539. So there's quite a few years between their death and Mary finally receiving her inheritance. But unfortunately, this is short-lived because Mary died on the 19th of July, 1543. Her resting place is unknown. Mary's children, Catherine Carey and Henry Carey, both go on to serve Queen Elizabeth I. They become favourites of Queen Elizabeth I and serve her loyally for the rest of their lives. Some trivia now, and a fact. Today's royal family, British royal family, descend from Mary Boleyn. Princes William and Harry descend from her twice over. Their father, Charles, Prince of Wales, descends from Mary's daughter, Catherine Carey. And the two princes' late mother, Diana, Princess of Wales, descends, well, descended from Mary's son, Henry Carey. So an interesting link with today's royal family, a Boleyn link. So those are 
facts about Mary. That is what we know for sure about Mary Boleyn. The rest, assumptions, myths, theories. And I'll be going on to those in my next video and just trying to look at where they've come from and is there any basis uh, to these myths? myths? Well, assumptions like Mary Boleyn slept with King Francis I. Mary Boleyn had a long relationship with King Henry VIII and she was his true love, uh, that her children were actually fathered by Henry VIII. So we'll be looking at theories, assumptions and the myths that surround this woman. But today I thought I'd focus on who Mary actually was, what we know about her. Not quite as exciting as the Mary Boleyn of the other Boleyn girl, I don't think but she makes the perfect blank canvas for novelists and a perfect blank canvas for us to sort of imagine and picture her in our minds. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll be back very soon with the next instalment on Mary. Take care. Bye-bye.